today is the day we leave for our 2024 season adventures. We're going to do something new, a new segment called Chatting with Cruisers. So what's the most unexpected experience you've had? I'm Cindy, and this is Shell. We sold everything and set off on an adventure, living and cruising on a boat named Seashell. Click subscribe and sit back as we show you that it's possible for all of us to live an extraordinary life. Today is the day we leave for our 2024 season adventures. It's exciting. There's anticipation and I want to say a little bit butterflies for what could happen, but we're hoping for all sunshine and dolphins this season. With excitement and expectation, we leave Stewart in February and head south to Miami to cross to the Bahamas for the 2024 season. This is crossing day. It is flat calm in here. Dolphins greeting us this morning. <laughs> yeah, the dolphins just came and said, you're good to go. Yeah. So I think we'll go. <gasps> oh, it's exciting. Gulf Stream Crossing was uneventful, which is the way we like it. Our first stop was at Bimini Cove Marina, where we got to enjoy some downtime hanging out at the infinity pool and enjoying the new Tiki restaurant on site. They had a winter deal of $250 plus power for the week. So we settled back into the Bahamas relaxed vibe. As soon as we docked, I was greeted by Marbles and her friends that I had friended from two years ago when we stayed here with a blown engine. I want to give a huge thanks to our patrons who help keep these videos coming. After a week in Bimini, we locked up on a multi-day window to get us into the Exumas via Chubb and Nassau. location today at Norman's Key and it's beautiful. Look at all this. It's our first time getting in the water. It's exciting to be back. First time in the water, 2024 season and I see my first Eagle 
Yeah, that's a nice eating size. That was the best shot I ever took with spears, stone dead. Right through the brain. <laughs> Looks like you got a little bit of a splash. Yeah. What do you mean she wanted to land on the beach? We spent a week or so in the northern Exumas around Normans and Shroud Key. But pretty soon we had a weather forecast that was calling for some strong westerlies that pushed us south looking for protection from possible gale force winds. The storms arrived and departed over a three-day extreme weather event. At Cambridge Key, we experienced winds of 35 knots, but we heard that it reached up to 65 knots just south of us in Staniel Key area. Further south in Georgetown, multiple boats were reportedly struck by lightning, one of the greatest fears for cruisers when such storms roll through. Our advice for weather like this is to always keep an eye on the medium to long-term forecast and plan your anchorages accordingly be in your safe harbor multiple days before the weather comes through. Don't be the ones jockeying for a spot at the last minute in an already crowded anchorage. Or worse, coming in during the storm trying to find a safe place to drop your anchor. This is stressful not only for yourself, but to everyone else in the anchorage. If you are one of those ill-prepared cruisers, you will be called out on it, either over the radio or by the hands-on hips bow people. Today we're going to do something new, a new segment called Chatting with Cruisers. And today we have Will and Joy from Will and Joy. They uh, have been boating for about 20 years. Yep. Um, we first met them on the Rideau back when we were boating on the Rideau. And now today we're all in the Bahamas. Uh, they have a 44 foot carver, which you've cruised down here in. And you're on your second season. That's correct, second season here. Here in the Bahamas. Finally get to meet you. Yes, we tried to down here. <laughs> yeah, we tried to meet up last year, but with boating and weather and stuff, it's hard to meet up. So why are you here? So, um, like Cindy said, we've been boating for 20 plus years. Um, my grandparents lived on Georgia Bay in Midland, Ontario. So I grew up with boats. So boating has kind of been in our blood. Um, we first started off as a bucket list to do the Great Loop. Uh, and want to ensure that we did the Bahamas as a side trip for that uh, loop, which we did in 22, 23, and then uh, Bahamas last winter. And this year we came back down to Bahamas and we just love the water, um, the culture that's down here, the cruising areas, the snorkeling, it's all so much fun. Tell us a little bit more about your boat and why are you in this boat down here? Okay, so we purchased the boat about what, 15 years ago and uh, a number of reasons. Every boat is a compromise, as yeah. most of us will know. Uh, so this one kind of fit our price range to start with. Uh, had most of the facilities that we needed, such as a washer dryer, a diesel, uh, an oven and a stove. Oven and a stove, yes. Uh, air conditioning. It also has a very large beam, 15 feet, with a lot of living room space inside. A large sun deck at the back. Uh, it has plenty of space on the front to carry our paddle boards and kayaks. Uh, and it's a good. Uh, near shore and Bahamas cruising style boat. It's certainly not an offshore boat, but it right. certainly fit what we wanted to do. And what we could afford to do. And yeah. afford to do as well. Right. So mm -hmm. sea kindly and, and sea worthy for this type of boat. That's right. Boat. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So what's the most unexpected experience you've had 
while cruising. I think that was going into locks. <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, it relates to mechanical breakdown. Okay. And we had, uh, in the Erie Canal, we had an entrance to the lock and we lost our uh, transmission controls. So we had uh, stuck in forward with no way to get out of forward, no way to stop. Uh, it was and we were going to hit the wall. We were going to hit the wall. Uh, yeah. We luckily hit no other boats in there. It was a lot of uh, panic in a very short moment of time. <laughs> but we did it really well yes. together. Yeah. And uh, we were able to get stopped, get someone to back us in, get back to the docks at Waterford and get it repaired. So I think, uh, and getting it repaired was you and another boater repairing yeah, it. That's right. So you are going to do a lot of your own repairs here. Yes. Yeah. That sounds scary. Well, it does. Yeah. It was, <laughs> uh, We've not had any weather scares per se. Um, we kind of make sure we're connected with weather. We know where to get away from bad weather. And, and we've been lucky. Like. But it's the mechanical things that are unexpected, but unfortunately, I guess it's expected. <laughs> yeah. What is one thing you know now that you wish you knew before you left? That we should have got a water maker right away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so should we? Yeah. We just got one, and so it's like, with that. Yeah. So how do we last year we we so did long. the jerry jug into shore. Occasionally have to go into Stanley Key or something to get water. Uh, we didn't have the ability to uh, rinse off after snorkeling or rinsing. Couldn't our use gear. my washing machine. Couldn't use our onboard washing yeah. machine because it's water. Yeah. And this season with the water maker, it's so liberating. We can so much water, and it's good quality water comes out of the water maker. We yeah. can drink it, uh, use it for washing and everything else. It's the one thing we're most happy to buy on the boat. Yeah. That's, See, that's they're good. smarter than us. We had to go through seven seasons <laughs> without a water maker. They only did one. Yes. yes. But it was also the problem of how to fit it in because you yes. didn't know how to fit it in. Yeah, but so it worked out yeah. well. Yeah. Luckily, with Seawater Pro, we were able to component it into the, right. the engine room area. It's modular. You can put anything yeah. anywhere. It worked out really well. Yeah. Yeah. What is uh, one piece of advice you would give somebody who has not started but wants to start this cruising trip? So don't delay. Uh, if it's something you want to do, make sure you get out there and do it. Uh, there are a lot of great organizations to join, such as uh, Great Loop Cru uh, Cruisers Association, Marine Trawlers, uh, lots of information. Power on Squadron. Power Squadron is another good source of information. Uh, certainly now with YouTube and Facebook, there are lots of groups out there you can uh, visit as well. Uh, they have good information in there and just read up on it. But the main thing is just do it. Yeah, do Go it. for yeah. it. That's good. Tomorrow, I know. tomorrow is not promised, so no, it's don't so put it sure. off. If you really want to do it, just get up and do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, it's good. What do you most like about this lifestyle? Um, I would say independence so we can come and go where we want when we, when we want weather dependent of course uh, and the people we meet mm -hmm. I think uh, the camaraderie the sharing of knowledge between boaters the helpfulness between boaters that have problems yeah. and just the friends we meet and, and, yeah. different people. and so many places you can go yeah there's just so many places you know there's Georgian Bay there's down here there's the intercoastal there's yeah. You the never keys. have enough time, yeah. really, yeah. Well, yeah, right. to see yeah. it all. Yeah. yeah. So what's the thing you don't like the most during this? So I think it was a surprise. We knew maintenance was a big thing, but there is some days where you just hang your head and go, oh, I can't afford to fix another thing. But yeah. it's not only that, <laughs> but it's, tr it's troubleshooting to figure out what actually is what wrong, is like yeah. how yeah. to fix yeah. it. But once you get it fixed, you sit down, you talk to people, friends, figure out how to fix it. Sometimes you have to buy something new. You get it fixed, and once you're going again, that problem seems to all go away again until it happens again. Yeah, <laughs> and you go, sometimes you have a couple of months, so there's a lot of things that go wrong, and then you go six months, yep. and there's nothing. Yep. Yep. And yep. you do all the prevent preventative maintenance yep. in the world, but it still happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what you didn't do will break. That's right, <laughs> that's right. So, um, I mean, it is a, a challenge sometimes, uh, mentally, because you get that feeling, that, oh no, I can't we keep going with repairing this stuff. But uh, at the end, down here, when you look at this water, and the activities you can do here, it's worth all the extra efforts to get here. Yeah. And you look awesome. at all the people with different boats, it can be super expensive boats, cheap. They all have the same issues with the maintenance. Yeah. 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 So so you would say your people should budget? more for maintenance? Yeah, I would say... I mean, because uh, you're an experienced boater, you know right. 
what maintenance takes, right. but yet you still did this and still feel like that right. was strenuous. So, yeah. so yeah, so uh, we carry a lot of spares. Yeah. Uh, we've learned over time how many spares to carry certain things. Uh, there's some things you just can't carry, like we had a water tank, a hot water tank go this year, so we were luckily in a marina where we could get a new one. But yeah, you have to budget a fair bit of money for maintenance. Um, the boats have a lot of systems and yeah. they do break down from time to time. And we're in a salt water environment. Mm -hmm. Salt water. And, <laughs> and sun. So yeah. the three S's. Yeah, yeah. And I think too, what happened as well, we were boating on weekends and on holidays, and now we're boating full time. Right. And there's more stress on the systems right. too. Right. You're using it more. It's, yeah. it's constant. Yeah, we're constantly going, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the boats we use down here are pleasure craft. Yeah. Uh, we're not the mega yachts or yeah. the the yeah. commercial. Yeah, great commercial great. Great. So these are yeah recreational boats. So the yeah. systems just aren't as tough as some boats. Well, thanks guys. Excellent. Yeah, very well. well thanks great so to meet much. you down here again. And yes. Yeah. with Cruz the Rito and everything. So. And Perfect. if folks want to find you, do you have a social media thing you want us to? Not really. <laughs> uh, we, we, you we, can come say hi if you we, see their boat. We, we are users of Nebo, which is a uh, tracking system. Okay. Uh, we also have our email and, and WhatsApp. Yeah. And we follow through Facebook mostly. Yeah, we used to do a blog, but that was too much work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it became time consuming. Yeah. We know how time consuming yeah. this. Yeah. Social media can be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, cool. So if you guys like. Go ahead. Thanks. Thank you for having us. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys like this, you know, let us know. Give us a like down below and comment to see if you want to hear stories from more people. Yeah. And right now we're going to go out and have some fun with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun. Sweet.